Hey guys, summers are here and I thought, hey, let's do a review of an air conditioner. So in this video, we're gonna check out LG's brand new hot and cold dual inverter split air conditioner. And this being a hot and cold air conditioner cools during summers and heats during winters. So the heating functionality eliminates the need of having a separate electric heater for your room. So the model that I will be reviewing in this video is PS H19 VNXF and this is a 1.5 ton or 18,000 BTU air conditioner which is suitable for medium to large rooms. And I'm gonna put the purchase link in the video's description and if you are watching this video in 2023 or 24, I will update the link to the latest model. By the way, hot and cold air conditioners are also known as heat pumps. Also, this particular model has every feature that you would want. It's got four-way swing for better airflow, comes with two filters, anti-allergy filter, and mesh filter is coated with cationic silver ions that deactivates viruses and bacteria. It's also got a copper condenser with anti-corrosion coating. And because this is a heat pump, along with cooling, you also get the heating functionality. And being a convertible air conditioner, you can make it run at its 80, 60 and 40% power to save energy. It can also run at its 110% power for those super hot days. So you've got a total of 5 power modes on this air conditioner. Anyways, done with the intro, now let's dive into the video. Alright, so the first thing we will do is take a look at the outdoor unit. By the way, if you are wondering, the condenser fan is powered by a BLDC motor and it will adjust the fan speed depending on the load. Now let's take a look at the back of the unit. So we've got a nice thick double air condenser coil. And yes, this is a split row condenser. That means it's got another layer of condenser coil at the back of this one. And if I shine my flashlight on the edge of the condenser coil, you can actually see the second row inside over there. So that is a lot of surface area, which is awesome. Now LG claims that this is a copper condenser and there is also anti-corrosion coating on the condenser coil. They're calling it ocean black. And you've also got this coating on the U-bends of the coil. That is nice because this is where the coil usually develops leaks due to corrosion. And you will also find this coating on the left side of the indoor unit's coil. And this little thing is the outdoor temperature sensor. This kind of helps the air conditioner calculate at how much power it should be running at. And this model comes with R32 refrigerant which LG has been using for a couple of years. And its cooling capacity is about 5.2 kilowatts and heating is 5.4 kilowatts. So that is about 1.5 tons. And we will test out the power consumption later in the video. And lastly, let's quickly take a look at the supplied accessories. First off, you've got 3 meters worth of copper line set. Then there is the remote control and the batteries for the remote, user manual, connecting wire that goes from the indoor to the outdoor unit. It's a 4 core 3 meter wire screws to mount the indoor unit, anti-allergy filter, and this thing is the drain pipe connector for the outdoor unit. You see, this is a heat pump. It is essentially a reverse cycle unit. So when it is running in heat mode, the outdoor condenser coil will become cold and thus turn into an evaporator and will get condensation. And all of the condensate water will drip through this thing. That is supposed to be attached at the bottom of the outdoor unit. So make sure that you attach this during the installation. Next, you've also got these rubber feet. These help dampen the vibrations coming from the compressor. And finally, we've got tape to cover the copper line set. So that's it for the tour of the outdoor unit and the supplied accessories. Let me get this thing installed and I will get back to you in just a second. Alright, the air conditioner is now installed and it is up and running. The installation was problem free and the LG techs installed it exactly how I told them to. And I got the outdoor unit installed on this horizontal stand to save space and to make cleaning the condenser easy. And if you are wondering, yes, we did pull a vacuum, this step is necessary and it is included in the standard installation. So make sure that you tell the LG tech to do this because it removes moisture and contaminants from the evaporator and the copper lines. Anyways, it's been a few days since the installation and the air conditioner has been working fine without any issues. And even though it's installed in a pretty big, almost 200 square feet room, it has absolutely no issues cooling the room down. 
So I'm standing at the other side of the room and the air conditioner is set to 24 degrees and checking the thermometer it is also 24 degrees at this side of the room. So that shows you the cooling is even throughout the room. And to give you guys an idea of how awesome the cooling performance is, when it's running at full power it blows almost 2 degrees celsius air. It is so cold you won't be able to stand in front of it for more than a few minutes. That's how an air conditioner should cool like. It is also extremely energy efficient. I've got my meter plugged in and it is showing that the air conditioner is using about 663 watts to maintain 24 degrees celsius inside the room. And keep in mind it is pretty warm outside about 35 degrees celsius. And during the night the power consumption drops even further down to just 300 watts. This is because the temperature outside isn't really that warm so it doesn't really take much power to maintain the room temperature. By the way, I'm running this at 26 degrees celsius because 26 feels comfortable. And there is a big difference in feeling comfortable versus feeling cold. And trust me when I say, air conditioning is there to keep you comfortable and not to make you feel cold. And running at 26 degrees also saves a lot of power. I've actually made a video on how much power you can save by running the AC at 26 versus 24 and 22. So make sure to check that video out once you are done with this one. And the maximum power consumption recorded during the day was about 1.6 kilowatts. And this was about 5 minutes after switching the air conditioner on. So the room was quite warm at this point and the air conditioner was quickly trying to cool it down. And as the room cooled down, the power consumption also started dropping. And eventually, the power consumption dropped down to about 650 watts. Now let's talk about the heating functionality. To switch the air conditioner into heat mode, press the mode button until you see this icon. And now the air conditioner is in heat mode. So now we can proceed to set the temperature. I would suggest setting the temperature to 22 in heat mode because it's a good balance between comfort and power consumption. And at 22 degrees celsius you won't need any woolen clothing. And guys, let me tell you. The heating performance is amazing. The temperature of the air coming out in heat mode is 52 degrees celsius. I mean this thing blows proper hot air. And this will make you feel comfortable no matter how cold it gets outside. So now you may ask how does this heating functionality actually work. Thing is there is no heating element inside this thing. Well let me give you a quick and simple explanation without going into too much detail. Okay, so there are two parts of an air conditioner. The indoor unit is called the evaporator and the outdoor unit is called the condenser. So during summers, when the air conditioner is running in cooling mode, you might have noticed that the outdoor unit blows hot air and the indoor unit blows cold. So what happens is that the refrigerant absorbs heat from the room and moves it to the outside. And this is how the refrigeration cycle works in cooling mode. The refrigerant absorbs heat from the room and moves it to the outside. Now during winters, when you put the air conditioner in heat mode, what happens is that the refrigeration cycle gets reversed. The outdoor unit now becomes the evaporator and it will blow cold air, as you can see on my infrared thermometer. And the indoor unit now becomes the condenser and it's gonna blow hot air. So the roles are essentially reversed. And the thing that makes this possible is a reversing valve which is inside the outdoor unit. And it reverses the flow of gas and now the hot gas coming from the compressor goes straight into the indoor unit's coil. Which makes the indoor unit blow hot and the outdoor unit blow cold in heat mode. I mean that's pretty much all there is to it. So hot and cold air conditioners or heat pumps are exactly the same as a regular cooling only unit. The only difference is that they have a reversing valve and some extra logic to make the heating functionality work. And if you want to take a look at the heating functionality in even more detail, like the power consumption and the kilowatt hour unit count, you might want to take a look at this video. So I've done a proper heating performance and power consumption test on an LG hot and cold air conditioner. I'll put the link in the video's description. At the starting of the video, I told you guys that this is a convertible air conditioner. Meaning, you can manually set the power level at which you want the air conditioner to operate. And you can do this by pressing the 5-in-1 button on the remote. 
You can even make it run at its 110% power if it is super hot. You know what? Let me give you guys a demonstration of this feature. Alright, so when the air conditioner is running at its maximum power, it consumes about 1570 watts. And the temperature of the air coming out at maximum power is at about 1.8 degrees Celsius. It is super cold. Also, the maximum power consumption depends on the temperature outside. So if you see your air conditioner pulling more power than this, especially when it's really hot outside, that is actually normal. Anyways, let's carry on with the test. Running the air conditioner at 80% power drops the wattage down to 1173 watts. So right now it should be running as a 1.1 to 1.2 ton unit. And the temperature of the air at 80% power is at about 5.6 degrees Celsius. Now one thing you have to keep in mind, after you press the button, it takes about 3 to 4 minutes for the power levels to change. As you can see, it is not instantaneous, so please keep that in mind and give the air conditioner about 5 minutes for the power levels to readjust. The power consumption drops to 850 watts at the 60% setting. So now it should be running as a 0.75 to a 0.8 ton unit. And the temperature of the air coming out at 60% power is at about 8 degrees Celsius. And finally, running the air conditioner at just 40% power brings the power consumption down to about 500 watts. So only half a kilowatt and the temperature at such low power levels is at about 14 degrees Celsius. So even at 40% power, it is still blowing cold air. Very impressive. And if it's super hot outside, you can make this air conditioner run at its 110% power. So press the 5-in-1 jet mode button on the remote and give the air conditioner a couple of minutes to increase its power. So take a look, it's using almost 2 kilowatts while running in jet mode. So I think in jet mode it should be running as a 1.8 to a 1.9 ton air conditioner. But you know what, I feel jet mode puts a lot of stress on the air conditioner since it is running at 110% power plus it also makes the indoor fan run at extremely high speeds, more than what you can set manually. So this is why I always say do not use the jet mode, instead increase the fan speed manually. And talking about the other miscellaneous features, first off you get a 5 step fan speed control. So F1, F2, F3. F4, F5 and then you've got the natural wind mode. So in the natural wind mode, the blower fan keeps changing its speed to make it feel as if natural breeze was blowing. The air throw is also quite nice. I am standing on the other side of the room and I can still feel the cold air blowing and it's only running at the medium fan speed. And it's also got 4-way swing, so that means along with the automatic vertical swing, you also get automatic horizontal swing. And you can actually see both of them moving from this little clip. And by the way, both of these can be adjusted manually by pressing the swing button on the remote. This is for the vertical swing and this one is for the horizontal swing. So you can adjust these as you like. And this thing is dead silent, especially when you set the fan to its lowest speed. The maximum noise I recorded was about 28 to 29 decibels. I'll keep quiet for a moment so that you can hear the original audio. So yes, barely any noise coming from the air conditioner. As for the outdoor unit, the noise levels were at about 58 decibels at a distance of about 1 meter. And keep in mind there is also a lot of ambient noise. The air conditioner itself doesn't make that much noise. And I've already shown you at the starting of the video that this model comes with two filters. The green one is the anti-allergy filter and the main mesh filter is coated with cationic silver ions that will deactivate viruses and bacteria, which is an essential feature these days. You also get the auto changeover mode which will automatically switch the air conditioner into heat mode whenever winter sets in. But I'm not a huge fan of this feature, I prefer changing the modes manually. And yes, you can actually switch off the temperature display on the AC by pressing the light off button on the remote. It is kinda super bright so yeah, makes sense to turn it off during the night. 
So let's also measure how many units this air conditioner ends up consuming in about 24 hours. So I'll reset the meter and we're starting the test on Thursday 7th of April at about 3 p.m. And I will come back the next day and check how many units this air conditioner ends up consuming. And we will be measuring the power consumption at 26 degree temperature setting because this setting strikes a good balance between comfort and power consumption. Also at the time of doing this test, the temperature outside is at about 40 degrees Celsius. And it is very important that you know the temperature outside because the outside temperature has a big impact on how much power your air conditioner uses. Anyways, we will let this thing run and I will come back tomorrow. Alright, so it is now Friday 8th of April 2.54 PM. So it has been 24 hours. So out of 24 hours, we have used the air conditioner for 13 hours and 9 minutes. And during this time, we have ended up consuming 7.9 kilowatt hours. That is about 8 units. So this is actually a very reasonable number. One of the reasons why the power consumption is low is because of the temperature setting. Now today, it is much hotter outside. The weather app on the phone says it is 41 and my thermometer shows it is 41.8. So almost 42 degrees Celsius. So if we were to do this test today, we will end up with a significantly higher power consumption. So keep in mind the temperature outside has a big impact on how much energy your air conditioner uses. But overall, I am very happy with the result. Also, before we end this review, let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about this air conditioner. So number one, the remote control does not have a backlight. So lack of a backlight makes it impossible to see the LCD display of the remote at night. And secondly, this beep sound cannot be turned off. And this is quite annoying, especially when everyone is sleeping at night. So these two shortcomings are just minor inconveniences and are not a deal breaker. And additionally, you also get 5 years warranty on the inverter PCB and 10 year warranty on the compressor which also includes gas recharging. But from my experience, as long as you take care and maintain your air conditioner by regularly cleaning the condenser coils, you are never going to encounter any problems with the compressor or the PCB. I clean mine every 6 months and you can see how dirty these things get. And you can just use plain water, I have never used any soap or any special chemicals to clean the condenser. Trust me when I say, regular maintenance goes a long way and it will definitely extend the overall lifespan of your air conditioner. So if you are looking for an awesome hot and cold air conditioner, I would certainly recommend this. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and if you have any doubts or questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I will try and answer them. Alright, so thank you for watching and I will see you guys in another video.